Some of you may find this very simplistic, but to get started, I need to open up Excel. To open up Excel, I need to click on the Start button, and I can either come up here, and if I recently opened up the program, it'll be listed there, but if not, I can click in this Instant Search field and type in Excel, and then come up here, if it is on my computer, and then just go ahead and click on it, and it'll open up. The only problem is, is if I close out of it, then I have to do the whole thing over again, or just click on Start and go to Excel. Better yet, instead of doing that, I'm going to go ahead and right click it while it's there. And you can also come down in here and do your Excel search again and come up to your results and right click on that as well. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to send it to the desktop as a shortcut. So when I hover over Send To and I go to Desktop, Create Shortcut, when I click on it, it's going to create a shortcut of Excel on my desktop. Now I don't see it here because it's hiding behind my menu here. Click off in a blank area, there it is. So I can go ahead and double click and it'll open up Excel. But better yet, I also have it created as a shortcut down here on my Quick Launch Toolbar. Now all these things I'm talking about are basic Windows Vista operations. You can learn more about this by watching the Windows Vista Level 1 training video. But quickly, the difference between the shortcut here and the shortcut down on my Quick Launch Toolbar is that all I have to do is click once on here to open it up versus when I close out of here, double clicking. So a single click is a lot easier for me, so I can do it either way. Before we start working down here in our spreadsheet, I want to cover the layout of Excel 2007. Now for those of you who have used previous versions of Excel or coming from 2003 XP or older versions, you're going to see a major difference here. First of all, let's go over the layout. In the upper left hand corner, they have the office logo button. When you click on it, it gives you a menu. You can create new workbooks, open up other saved workbooks, or save your current workbook that you're in, and you can also print and so on. I'm going to click off in a blank area to collapse the menu. Next to it is this little teeny tiny toolbar that is customizable. In fact, it's the only toolbar that you have access to and that you can customize. The reason why it's called the Quick Access Toolbar, or QUAT, is because you can quickly execute commands by adding buttons to the toolbar and clicking on them. Like, here you go, I have the Save button. When I click on it, it'll actually save the workbook. I can also add Print buttons and other buttons to it and remove them from the Quick Access Toolbar as well. Over to the right here in the center is the title of your workbook. Currently, it's Book 1. Anytime you open up a new workbook, it's going to give you some generic name until you actually save it. Once you save it and give it a name, then of course it's going to be the name you gave it, and it's not going to be this generic Book 1 or Book 2 or, or Book 3 and so forth. Over to the right, if you watch the Windows Vista Level 1 training video, you'll understand that you have three buttons here, Minimize, Restore, Down, and Close. Also, below that you can see almost the same buttons, Close, Restore, Down, and Minimize. The difference is, is that if you click the outer X here, it closes the whole program. For example, I click on it, closes it, right? So I'm going to open it up by double clicking on Excel here. Then you have an inner X. If you close the inner X, it just closes the window or the workbook, but it leaves the Excel program still open up at the top. So I can go ahead and click the office logo button, click new, double click on blank workbook, and I, of course, get a new workbook. Notice up in the title bar here where it says book two, because I left the program open and I created a new workbook, it's going to name it workbook two. And if I close that again and open up a new workbook, it'll be book three until I actually give it a name. In any case, you want to keep that in mind. Outer X closes the whole program. Inner X just closes that workbook, that inner window, not the whole program. Now over to the left-hand side here, they have what Excel calls a ribbon, this huge thing right here. You think of it as a toolbar, but the geeky term or the new terminology is ribbon. And on that ribbon, they have different tabs. You can see all the titles up at the top when I hover over them. It looks like it outlines as a tab. So for example, when I click on Page Layout, it now solidifies showing that I'm on the Active Page Layout tab here versus going back to Home tab, which is now active. And then the Page Layout disappears. Now on each tab, within the tabs, most of them will have what are called groups. So for example, I'm looking at my font group here, this little section right here, and that deals basically with your fonts. If you want to change the font type for Calibri, which by the way is a new type of font in Excel 2007, you can change it to Times New Roman, Arial, and we'll do more of this in later training videos. You can make the font bold, italics, underline, you can color the font, you can color the cell down below, the whole cell, by clicking on the paint bucket, and that's the group. They also have the alignment group, how you want to align the numbers within the cell, and then, of course, the number formatting, if you want it in dollar signs as a percent, and so forth. Now, you probably already noticed, but in each group, or some of the groups, they have a little tiny button. It's called the Expandable Dialog Box button. I just call it the Expand button. And all that means is that this group doesn't have everything that you see here. It has more when you click on the Expandable Dialog Box button. So down here, I can do a little bit more than what I can see up here. In fact, some of the features you see here, you can do the same thing down in, in this Expandable Dialog Box or this new screen here. 
For example, you can see it's Calibri. I can change it here to any other type of font that I want, but I can also do that by clicking on the arrow here, right? There's more than one way to do things, but usually when you click on the expandable dialog box, it gives you more details than you would find within the group here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. Short little history lesson is the reason why Microsoft went this way instead of with menus. This whole visual ribbon is to let people know that there's more in Microsoft Excel that they can use by putting it all out in front of them. Of course, they do have the expandable dialog box buttons, but basically in each group you're going to get the meat and potatoes of it. If you want to get more detailed and more refined as you go along, then you can expand that and do a little bit more. Down below they have the name box that lets you know which cell you're in. So if I click in another cell, E5, you can see that the column E is in orange and the row 5, and it tells me I'm in E5. They have the formula bar that will display what's in the cell, and we'll go over that more in detail. And then below you actually have the spreadsheet. But before I start getting into the spreadsheet, I'm going to come down to the bottom here and the edge of the window frame of Excel here, and it's called the status bar. And the reason why is because as I enter in numbers in these cells and as I select certain cells, you're going to see different stats down below. For example, if I right click anywhere on the status bar, I have several options that are already defaulted for me, and I can check others. Like, for example, when I select a bunch of cells, it'll automatically pull down here on the stat bar the average of those cells. And like I said, we'll cover a lot of this in future training videos, but for right now, we're just getting the layout. And then over to the right-hand side, I'll click off in a blank area anywhere here just so I can collapse that menu. Over to the right-hand side, you have the zoom feature that you can zoom in and out of your spreadsheet, and also different views. Normal view, page layout view, and page break preview. And then, of course, you have your scrolly bars to scroll left or right or up and down in your spreadsheet. The two main uses for Excel can either be to store or create a database in Excel. As you can see here, you got the columns. You can have first name, last name, their address, phone number. And this is usually for small businesses. Now, if you're a medium-sized business with tens of thousands of people or data you want to keep track of in a database, I recommend using Microsoft's Access. And if you're a large business, maybe millions, that you want to keep track of, there's other software. The main purpose of Access is to be able to do calculations anywhere from simple adding, addition, multiplications to complex. And I'm going to show you both in these training videos and we'll get started in level one. But before we do, we want to learn how to navigate around Excel. First of all, you can use your mouse to click on any cell, right? You can also use your arrow keys on the keyboard to go up or down or left or right. Additionally, you can hit the tab key to go to the right or hold down the shift key and hit tab and go back to the left. To get back to the beginning of your worksheet here, just hit Control Home, the Control key on your keyboard, and hit the Home key. Usually to the right side of your keyboard, it'll take you back to A1. If you want to find out the maximum number of columns in Excel 2007 and the maximum amount of rows, instead of scrolling over forever, because you got your scroll bars here, right? You can just keep clicking and clicking, and you can see now I'm in the T column, or keep scrolling down. Instead, just click somewhere in your spreadsheet, hit the End key. Not the letter N, but E-N-D, the end key, it's below the home key, hit it once, and then hit the down arrow key on the keyboard, and it'll take you all the way down to, it looks like, about the millionth row. Also, hit the end key, and hit the right arrow key, and it'll take you over to the last column here, which is XFD. So think of it this way, there's a lot of columns and a lot of rows. I mean, once it's finished with the alphabet, A, B, C, D, all the way down to Z, then it picks up again with each column going A, 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 B, all the way down to XFD. And that can be your homework. Count up how many columns are in Excel. To get back to A1, think of it this way first. If you go down and right, you're going to end up finally in this last cell here, which is column XFD, uh, 1,048,576 row. But if you go up and left, far enough, you're going to go back to the beginning, which is A1, or just hit Control Home, and I'm back to where I started. You can also hit the Page Down key. The moment I hit it, I'm no longer in row 1, I'm in row 26, and I can keep paging down, and I can page up. Now if I want to page over to the right, then just hold down the Alt key and hit the page down, and I go from the A column over to the P, Alt, page down, and then Alt, page up to keep paging to the left, so you can page up and down or left or right. Now if you have numerous cells that you want to change the formatting for, like let's say cell C5 here, and you can see that when I'm in column C, row 5, the name box here tells me that I'm in C5. And I can come over here in F9. So let's say I have some text in F9 or some numbers and also in D5 and various other cells. If I want to go ahead and format them, change the format so they all have a dollar sign. Selecting them one at a time and then clicking on the dollar sign can be very annoying. What you can do is you can click on the one cell, hold down the control key, and with the control key held down you can click on numerous cells. You can see that I have right now 
where it's highlighted in orange on the column here and on the rows. You can see the faded light blue boxes. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six total cells, including this white one, which is the one I'm currently in, selected. Then all I have to do is hit the dollar sign or hit color the text or font within there with red or dump and color yellow, and it automatically fills up all those cells. Now, if I made a mistake, remember, in the upper left-hand corner in your quick access toolbar, you have the undo arrow that will undo what you did. And then, of course, you can always redo what you did or undo and click off in a blank area to deselect all of it. For bulk selection, getting a little bit spiffier now, is of course you can click and hold down the control key and click other cells, but you can also, while holding down the control key, click and drag. So you can see, click and drag, click, click and drag. I've got the control key held down this whole time. Now I let go of it, and I'll click off in a blank area. You can also click and drag in a range here, and that will select this block range just by holding it down. Now when you're clicking and dragging, keep in mind there's three different ways to do this. When you click and drag, notice my little mouse. It's actually a white cross and I'm moving around. Anytime you get that, you're free to select cells. If I move to the border, you see how it becomes a four-way black arrow and not the white cross. Huge difference. If you use the black arrow and you click and drag, it's actually going to move that whole range. And we'll cover that more in moving data around later. So you just don't want to willy-nilly just start clicking and dragging things. You want to pay special attention to what your cursor is looking like. So for example, if I want to select this range here, anywhere I've got a white cross, if I click and drag, I'm okay at selecting. But anywhere after I select, if I get a black cross, you're actually going to be moving the data around. Or in the lower right-hand corner, if you get a black cross, you're actually using the auto fill handle. So actually, three different crosses or arrows. You have the black cross, you have the border, four-way arrow, and then you have the center or the selection, white cross. So just for selecting, you want to make sure you got your white cross and you're free to click and drag to select cells. I'm going to click up here in A1 and let's say I want to do block selection. I don't want to click and drag forever here. What I can do, I'm going to click back in A1, is hold down the shift key. When I hold down the shift key and I click in cell, let's say K19, you see automatically just boom, selects it right to that point where I clicked by holding down my shift key. That works too. And then if I hold down my control key and I start clicking and dragging, see I've got my block selection and I also have using the control key extra selections by clicking or clicking and dragging and then click off in a blank area and it disappears. If you want to select the whole worksheet you can click on this button in the upper left hand corner selects the whole worksheet click off in a blank area. In previous versions of Excel you could hit control A and it would select the whole worksheet. It still does however if you have data numbers here and you click in one of those fields that has data or numbers it'll just select the area around it not the whole worksheet. You always want to click off in a blank cell in the worksheet and hit Control A to select the whole worksheet. Again, that's Control A. Click off in a blank area. If you want to select a column, go ahead and click on the uh, column header D and it selects the whole column. See how that black arrow pointed down? By the same token, if you go over to the left hand side and click 8 and you see the arrow pointing to the right, it selects the whole row. Hold down the Control key and I can click on the column and I get crosshairs. Again, using the control key, you can select multiple columns, rows, arranges, cells. And a range is nothing more than just two or more cells. So, for example, if I click in cell E5 and I drag over to F5, that's a range from E5 to F5 versus just a single cell. If you type in anything in a cell and you see how my cursor is flashing, if I hit enter, it solidifies, right? Now, if you need to make any changes in that cell, I can do it one of two ways. I can click on the cell and come up here in the formula and select hit the backspace or just typing more numbers, the formula bar, and then when I'm finished hit enter, that works. Or you can select the cell and then double click and it dumps your cursor right back in there, doesn't it? Then within that cell, not up here, but within the cell, you can hit backspace, type in some more numbers and hit enter. That works. If you ever find yourself double clicking in a cell and you start clicking outside of it and it won't let you go and it still is trying to add other cells, in other words, if it gets too hard and you can't leave the cell, you can't get out of it, always hit escape. If you hit escape in the upper left hand corner of your keyboard, it'll pull you out of the cell. So double click to get in the cell, hit escape, pulls me out. One last thing before we go is down at the bottom you have your different worksheets. Now all these worksheets here make up the complete workbook. 